Good morning, Hillsdale. Thank you so much for joining us today. We have your weekly announcements today. is our Wednesday night activities. We have Wednesday night dinner starting at 5.30 and that is gonna be hamburgers, potato salad, baked beans on Wednesday. So come out and join us starting at 5.30. And then we have prayer at 6.30 and that is also in the fellowship hall um, on Wednesday as well. We invite everyone to attend um, starting with the dinner at 5.30 or if you're not able to make dinner, come at least for prayer at 6.30. It's a really great time for our church to pray for each other and to lift each other up. And if you are a person that gets to-go meals, please let the church office know by noon on Wednesday if you need a to-go meal so they can have that ready for you. Uh, the next thing is our small groups. If you are not part of our small group here at our church, we, we strongly urge you to get involved. It's a great way to connect intimately with a group of people and to learn more on a, a deeper level with some Bible studies. We have your Sunday school every Sunday at 930. Um, we have multiple classes going. Check in at the cafe. We'll get you directed in the right class for you. And then um, we also have other small groups that take place during the week. We have one on Sunday night, every other Sunday, and then one every other Tuesday. So if you're interested, please stop by the cafe and we will get you some information regarding that. We do have our uh, spring business meeting coming up on April 28th at 6 p.m. in the sanctuary. Um, we will have the print and ministry report starting next Sunday here at the cafe. So please come by and get your copy of the ministry reports. Um, and so then you're able to reach out prior to the business meeting if you have any questions regarding those reports. Um, we also have um, our memorial service for Bill Knight. That will be this Saturday at 11 o'clock here at the church. If you are able to help with food for the lunch that we provide after, please get in touch with Gail Hardis. Um, her number's in the bulletin if you're able to help provide some food for that. Um, on behalf of the Ashburns, we would like to thank all, all those that attended the memorial service for Brent um, yesterday. Great turnout and great support, so we want to thank you for that. Um, as a reminder, the events for the men's breakfast and the real event are both canceled for this month. We will pick back up on that next month in the month of May. We just had a lot going on and we want to allow ourselves plenty of um, time to have those events. And we also need to be able to support our church family when things happen. So again, we will be picking right back up on those um, in the month of May. We are still collecting for our automated external defibrillator. Um, again, this was not a budgeted item, so we are collecting donations to see if we uh, get that first. Um, these are life -saving, uh, a life-saving tool that you have right here on site. It's considered automated because it actually walks you through if a shock is needed for a patient. Um, they are about $1,500 a piece, so we strongly urge all of you, if you're able to donate anything extra above your tithe, um, to donate towards the AED machine so we can get one purchased and have it here right on site. We need no more cardboard, so thank you to all those that provided cardboard. We have enough at this time. Um, so uh, we really appreciate that for the church garden. Um, it was, uh, it's definitely going to be needed, and we have some great things coming. So uh, if you haven't been around there to see it, take a little walk around and see the garden. Um, we're getting ready to plant, so it's a great time of the year. Your deacon of the month is Mike Wynn. If you have any special needs or prayer requests, please re reach out to Mike. His number is in the bulletin. Um, and so he'll be willing to talk to you. If you can't get a hold of him or you lose your bulletin, call the church office and they'll get you in contact with him. Today is the last Sunday to collect for Annie Armstrong. We have been collecting throughout the month. Um, and this is for our home missions. So this is right here stateside in North America and in Canada. Um, so if you're able to give to that, please put, either put it in a regular giving envelope that said, and just write Annie Armstrong or put it in an actual Annie Armstrong Easter offering, and then drop that in the offering on your way out today. 
If this is your first time at Hills, then we want to welcome you today. Thank you so much for choosing us to worship with. When you came in today, we would have given you a bulletin. On the inside, there is a guest card. If you can write your name, and it, it tears off, so get write your name, address, email, and phone number, and we will get you some information about what's coming up in our church. Um, on the reverse side, if you're a regular attender or a member, you can write down any kind of special uh, commitments or any kind of special needs that you have. Maybe you're interested in joining Hillsdale or becoming baptized here at Hillsdale. This is a great opportunity to do that, and so we can reach out to you and discuss more about that. Again, we are really excited that you're here today. Let's stand up and continue to worship. Let's stand and worship together this morning. Glad to have you with us. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Sing it with us. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Sing that again, he has made me glad. He has made me glad, oh, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Yes, I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Lord, we give you glory. Lord, we give you honor. We give you all of the praise. Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory. And you reign in majesty, Lord. We give you praise. Lord, we give you glory. Lord, we give you honor. We give you all the praise. We give you all of the praise. Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory. And you reign in majesty, Lord. We give you praise. We humbly bow before you in all of who you are. The precious rose of Sharon, you're my bright and morning star. The lily of the valley, the lamp of sin is slain. Lord, you are Lord of all, my King of kings. Lord, you're worthy of my everything. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, give you glory. Lord, we give you honor. We give you all the praise. We give you all of the praise. Oh, Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory, and 
you reign in majesty, Lord. We give you praise. We humbly bow before you in all of who you are. The precious rose of Sharon, you're my bright and morning star. The lily of the valley, the lamp for sinners slain. Lord, you are Lord of all, my King of kings. Lord, you're worthy of my everything. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you glory. Lord, we give you honor. We give you all of the praise. Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory. And you reign in majesty. Oh, Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory. And you reign in majesty. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, he bled and died, to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Sing it with us. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. How sweet to hold our newborn baby. And feel the pride and joy he gives, but greater still the calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. And then one day 
I'll cross that river. I'll fight life's fight. No more with pain. And then as death gives way to victory, I'll see the lights of glory and I'll know he lives because he lives. I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because I know he owes the view. And life is worth the living just because he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future, and life is worth the living just because he lives, and life is worth the living just because he God's own Son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy One. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit. Your work on earth is done. Jesus, my Redeemer, name above all names, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Oh, for sinners slain, thank you, oh, my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till your work on earth is done. When I stand in glory, I will see his face. There I'll serve my King forever in that holy place. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your son and leaving your spirit till your work on earth is done. Thank you. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your son and leaving your spirit till 
your work on earth is done. Amen. You may be seated as the worship team dismisses. Pastor John will bring us our message to you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, you've heard the uh, the announcement. We are close. We are almost there of reaching our goal for Annie Armstrong. So, if you haven't, would you consider uh, giving to this? Um, particular offering um, so that we might be able to reach our goal that we have before us. Uh, it's good when we can reach goals that we set uh, uh, for these type of offerings. Um, our Light of Moon offering, we uh, went over uh, our goal uh, for the uh, for that particular offering, and I know that we can do the same thing uh, for uh, any Armstrong. So, if you will, please let us make uh, this goal that we have set for ourselves. Um, and before we get started, there's one other request that I ask of you: uh, if I go to sleep, will somebody wake me up when it's time to go home? Okay, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, that you have allowed us to be in this place one more time, dear Heavenly Father, that we can share, that we can fellowship, that we can lift you up in praise, dear Heavenly Father, and Lord, as we Listen to a word from you on this day, dear Heavenly Father. I pray that you would touch minds and hearts in a mighty way. You be with us, dear Heavenly Father, and you bless and keep us. For it's in your Son, Jesus' name, that I pray. Amen. I want to talk to you briefly this morning about the evidence. If you look at what is said in the Bible about the evidence, it says evidence is defined as grounds for belief. Very simple, isn't it? Grounds for belief. But if you need further information on the definition, you have to take a look at what the Merriam-Webster Dictionary have to say about the definition. Webster tells us that it is the available body of facts or information indicating whether a belief our proposition is true or valid. Now, I don't know which one of those definitions you want to uh, think about this morning, but we should think about one of those uh, definitions this morning as we go through uh, this message. There are three aspects that I will attempt to cover with you today concerning the evidence that leads us to our beliefs. First of all, what is our belief based upon? 
Second, we will look at the kind of evidence and the need of evidence. It is my hope that we will become interested or involved in the scriptures that we will know without a doubt concerning the evidence of Jesus Christ and what he did for us on Calvary. Matthew chapter 1 verses 22 and 23 in the NIV translation that says all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. That prophet was Isaiah. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Jesus was and is Emmanuel, God with us. In Jesus, God comes to people and lives in their world rather than have them try the impossibility of going to him. Jesus does not take people out of their turmoil and pain of daily life. He walks with them in it. Salvation is not an escape from the world, but God's engagement with the world. That is where Jesus is. As his name indicates. And that is where he gives people power. As it is said in Acts 1.8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And this is evidence based upon the fulfilled prophecy by Isaiah in 7.14. In our second aspect of the evidence, we will take a look at the kinds of evidence. Matthew 26, 59 through 61. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for false evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death. But they did not find anything. Though many false witnesses came forward, finally two came forward and declared, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. This was a misquotation and misapplication of Christ's words. At any rate, to say that Jesus had spoken against the temple was an action for which they could condemn him. 
Sometimes people will go to any extent to try to tear you down. And it really doesn't matter if it is false. We see these things happening in our society today where people are sent to prison on false evidence. The author of Hebrews tells us about the confirmed evidence in chapter 2, 3, and 4. How shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also testified to it by signs, wonders, and various miracles, and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. The phrase, how shall we escape? If the people who heard the message delivered through angels were justly punished when they disobeyed the law, how can believers expect to escape punishment when they neglect the even greater message delivered through the greater messenger, the Son. The author warns these believers, including himself, about neglecting salvation and losing out on the opportunity to reign with Christ. The great salvation cannot be a reference merely to justification because this salvation was first spoken by the Lord. Justification was spoken of it in the Old Testament. But it was the Lord who spoke of his follow, who spoke of his followers inheriting his kingdom and reigning with him. Those who heard him, the author includes himself among those who had not heard the Lord himself. The fact that the third generation had the message confirmed to them by the second generation who apparently worked the miracles implies that the confirming miracles had ceased by the third generation. The past tense confirmed supports this conclusion. The original readers may have seen the miracles, but they did not perform them. Verse 4 talks about the signs and wonders, refers to the miracles performed by the Holy Spirit through the Lord. And his, apostle, and his apostles in fulfillment of the ancient promises regarding coming, regarding the coming of the Messiah. Second Thessalonians 2, 9 and 10 tells us about the satanic evidence. 
Verse 9 says, The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with how Satan works. He will use all sorts of displays of power through signs and wonders that serve the lie. And all the ways that wickedness deceive those who are perishing. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. The power signs and lion wonders of the lawless one will be overshadowed by the glory and brightness of Christ in his second coming. It is significant that Satan, in order to promote his lie at the end of the age and pass himself off as a god, will use the same kind of power, signs, and wonders that the Spirit of Christ used in the beginning of the age to authenticate the truth about himself as a God. The condemnation of man, of sin, extend to those who follow him who did not receive the love of the truth in order that they might be saved. Although many will come to Christ after the rapture, those who reject Christ before the rapture will not receive him after the rapture. No doubt, Many who have superficially heard the gospel and turned away can still be saved after the rapture. But those who were under conviction of the Spirit and deliberately turned away will not. Are oh, y'all with me this morning? Did y'all go to sleep? Huh? Did y'all go to sleep this morning already? We almost done. So y'all just, just hang on for a minute, okay? This third and final aspect of the message might help us understand the need of evidence. In Luke 7, 19 through 22, should confirm those who are weak. Those who are of weak faith. Verse 19 tells us, He sent them to the Lord and asked, Are you the one who is to come? Or should we expect someone else? When the men came to Jesus, they said, John the Baptist sent us to you to ask, Are you the one to come, or should we expect someone else? At that very time, Jesus cured many who had diseases, sicknesses, and evil spirits, and gave sight to many who were blind. So he replied to the messengers, Go back and report to John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy, 
are cleansed. The death here, the dead are raised. And the good news is proclaimed to the poor. The phrase, are you the coming one? John's uncertainty may have been due to the fact that Jesus did not show signs of being the political and conquering Messiah that most Jews were anticipating in that period. Wow. Who were they participating? Who were they participating? Who were they expecting to come? Somebody to relieve them of the trials and tribulations that they were going through. The phrase, go and tell, Jesus prefers for his work to speak for his identity rather than make messianic claims. He appeals to his healing of the blind, the lame, the lepers, the deaf, and the dead, as well as emphasizing that he preaches the gospel. What more can you ask for? In closing, my hope is that the evidence that has been presented to you today is enough for you to make the right decisions in accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. If you have not done so, already or maybe you just need confirmation of the fact that Jesus is who he proclaimed to be based on his word if you are struggling with what you need to do please don't hesitate any longer We offer you that opportunity to come and share with our deacons what the Holy Spirit has laid on your heart as a result of the message you have heard here today. You are invited as our deacons come forward and as Kristen comes and lead us in our hymn of invitation, as you reflect on what you have been shared, what have been shared with you here today, what is it that the Holy Spirit has laid on your heart today? Is there anything Do you feel that you have reached all of what you need at this time? Do you feel like you're overwhelmed? Sometimes, do you feel like you are not sure of what you need to do? If there is anything that is holding you back from doing what Jesus have asked us to do. Or you ought to be working on that. You ought to be working on that each and every day because 
You never know. When the last day is going to come. Oh, you don't want to miss the boat. You don't want to miss the opportunity. If you're here today and you need Help. Jesus has the answers. He has always had the answers. And he will always have the answers. History, your faithfulness has walked beside me. The winter storms made way for spring, in every season, from where I'm standing. I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. Help me remember when I'm weak. Fear may come, but fear will leave. You lead my heart to victory. You are my strength, and you always will be. I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. I see the cross, the empty grave, the evidence is endless. All my sin rolled away because of you, oh Jesus. I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life. All over my life, I see your promises in fulfillment. All over my life, all over my life. Why should I fear the end? Evidence is here. Why should I feel the evidence is here? Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for your word. And now, Lord, as we go throughout the rest of this day, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray that we will just take time to ponder on what has been said here today, the worship that has been done here today, dear Heavenly Father, 
the singing and the praising of your name, dear God. And Lord, I just pray that you would walk with us throughout this next week, dear Heavenly Father, as we go throughout the week, dear Heavenly Father, until we meet again in this place, dear Heavenly Father. And Lord, I just ask that we would just look around us this morning, dear Heavenly Father, and those who are not here, dear Heavenly Father, those that you usually see here on Sunday morning, dear Heavenly Father, at this time, who are not in our presence this morning, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray that you would touch somebody, dear Heavenly Father, that they would make a phone call, dear Heavenly Father, to find out what's going on with those who are not here today, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, and you know, dear Heavenly Father, what we need, dear God. You know, dear Heavenly Father, that we need to be stand together, dear Heavenly Father. And Lord, when one is absent, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, the body is missing, the body is suffering, dear Heavenly Father. And I pray, dear God, that you, we, those of us who are here today, dear Heavenly Father, would take this opportunity and use it, dear Heavenly Father, to glorify you, dear God, to lift you up, dear Heavenly Father, to let them know, dear Heavenly Father, that we are with them. You be with us now as we go to our homes or wherever the travel may take us today. You walk with us. You keep your arms around us. For it's in your son Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed.